let's get this out. Like, <laughs> how did this all come about? Was it, you talking to Clay, did you let somebody know, hey, I'd love to come back and kick? How did you wind up here? Um, so it was a pretty interesting. I didn't really reach out to anyone. Um, obviously, I'm like good friends with a lot of guys on the team. And so like they were all like, oh, you still have eligibility? Like, do you have any, you know, like interest in doing that? And I was like, oh, maybe I don't, I don't really I didn't really say anything like, oh, yeah, I'd love to go back. Um, and then it kind of just I think someone told Coach Sweeney and it ended up that I was sitting in Charleston on my buddy's couch and got a text. And next thing I know is driving up here and the rest is history. Here I am sitting in front of y'all. So it's been a. Um, super fun and interesting journey, I think pretty unique. It's never really happened before, um, to my knowledge, and so I'm just taking it day by day, enjoying it all. So what's it like? You're on the interstate, out of Charleston, you get to Columbia. Did you have thought, like, what am I doing? I'm supposed to be starting a job in a few weeks, and here yeah. I am headed back to college to kick. So when I was driving up here, I pretty much, like, just had this complete peace about me, which is why I knew it was, like, the right decision. Um, from the time I got the call, my parents kept asking me, like, are you sure you want to do this? Like, you're putting yourself in a position to have, like, a lot of criticism and all this. And I'm like, everything in my mind, my dad's like, just trust your gut. And I trust my gut and everything. I've never had, like, a moment of, like, should I really be here? It doesn't feel right. Everything feels right so far. So, um, and that week of FSU, everyone kept, like, are the nerves there? Do you feel uncomfortable? And I'm like, I feel like I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Um, so it was just like getting right back in the rhythm of things. And um, I think just trusting my gut and having that peace about me, I never like doubted myself once or doubted the decision to come back. So. Jonathan Trevor Grove, CUTargets.com. I have to ask you about your hair. How, how recent is that? And is that a superstition thing? I know kickers can be superstitious. Uh, definitely not a superstition thing. This Thursday, we had like the off week. Um, <laughs> and. I woke up Thursday morning for segment meetings, and I had like my hair going everywhere, and I was like, "It's time I cut it." And I'd never gotten a buzz cut before, and I just kind of like, "I'm gonna just buzz it off." I was actually talking to Sage Ennis at breakfast about it. He's like, "You won't buzz it," and I was like, "I'll buzz it, sure, why not? It's just hair." Um, and then later in the day, people are like, "You won't bleach it," and I was like, "You know, life's too short. I already like had my stepped into the real world and had my job, and I know this is probably the last time I'll ever be able to bleach my hair again." Um, Probably by the time I can do it next, I'll be retired and won't have any hair. So it's like, <laughs> might as well do it now. Great stuff. Yeah, it does look a little interesting, I know. But. So, so that 51 yarder against Wake, I mean, you struck that ball pretty well. Um, was that about the best ball you ever struck? Obviously, it was a little left, but. Um, yeah, so I think it wasn't, I hit the ball as good as I could. I just didn't assess the wind as good as I could have. Um, I started at like middle right, closer to the right post. Um, the wind, I don't know if you remember, it was howling right to left in that end zone. Pretty, it was pretty strong wind. Um, and I think I just didn't, didn't play the wind enough. But in talking about like how I hit the ball, like I walked off to the sideline. I was like, I couldn't have hit the ball any better. Like it was exactly on my line, exactly like how I wanted to hit it. Um, honestly gave me way more confidence like running back out there um, just because of how well I hit the ball and everything felt so good. The wind just kind of moved it a little bit left there at the end, but um, I was super happy on how I hit that ball. You made two out of your last three, you know, and that was only miss and, and well struck. You feel like you're starting to get back into the groove and, and you know, with your accuracy and, and just the feel and uh, and also, I think with your misses, you've been uh, left on all of them. It, it's, has that been the way when you have missed in practice, or um, um, has it been different? So they all have been a little bit left. All three of them are like that close left. Um, but all my misses in practice, I had like two days where I was like missing, not all left, but if I was missing, it was a, even if it went in, it was kind of just dying left. Um, and I kind of just like watched myself and I realized I was kind of like closing down my shoulders and throwing my hips that way, fix that. And um, I feel like I don't, I don't want to like play a left ball starting everything right just because when I hit the ball right the way I'm supposed to and the way I feel confident I'm hitting it right now, it's going to go straight. So if I start it right, I don't want it, any reason to push it right. Um, but overall, I'm feeling really good, like my swing right now. 
after not kicking for so long, it, it feels great to be back. And like I'm just super confident in how I'm hitting the ball. Um, like you said, made two out of the last three. The one miss was 51, and probably the best hit ball out of all three of them. So um, I have no doubt in myself right now. I'm, I'm super confident going out there, and I'm ready to go to Miami and make some field goals. Are you more comfortable on one hash or the other, or same either way? Um, no, I never even really think about it. Someone asked me after the last game, they set the ball on the right hash, and then they moved it right after to the left hash. Um, I think it was the first one against Wake Forest. And they're like, does that like, and I'm like, honestly, I'm not even really paying attention to that. I'm like more thinking, keep my chest, like all my swing thoughts. Um, so I'm pretty comfortable on either hash. Um, I know I think the one against FSU and the one against Syracuse were both right hash um, that I missed left. And people were asking about it. I'm not really thinking like that. I'm just kind of going out there and I'm going to hit a straight ball, set my line, and next time think about the win maybe a little bit more if it's howling. So. You mentioned that your body feels really good after having not kicked for a long time. Um, but is there something, I don't know, you, you basically got a second lot in your football career. Does it feel lighter, different? Do you approach these moments any differently knowing that you aren't supposed to be here, but you are supposed to be here maybe? Um, I approach everything like I want to do my best. Um, but there is this like kind of freeing feeling, um, especially when I first got here, like the first week FSU, it's like, what's the worst that's going to, you know, I don't go out there um, and get the job done like I'm supposed to, or I miss everything that week. I'll just go right back to the life that I was in. Um, and I wasn't able to help the team like I was maybe hoping to. Um, but honestly, it's, I, I keep telling, my parents ask me that too. And I'm just like, if you, if I were in this position last year, say like BT went down, I think I would have so much more stress. Um, there's times like when he was hurt and like maybe it was Wednesday and I'd, my heart rate could start going up. I feel like so comfortable, like even this being up here talking to y'all, I probably would have been so much more nervous a year ago today than I am right now. And it's just, Everything feels right, um, and I don't know what that what that reason is, but it just feels right being here and um, getting a chance. And so this week and the rest of the weeks, we got six more games, and hopefully some after that. I'm going to just keep playing free and enjoying it. I mean, this is a super unique experience, talking to y'all, getting to play in Hard Rock Stadium. This, I mean, I'm just accepting it or, like, enjoying it all. Um, and I'm going to do my best and keep having fun with it. Um, I think that gives me my best shot of doing well this season is just having fun with it, enjoying being back with my friends. Most people aren't that excited to talk to us, so we appreciate that. Um, <laughs> you, how about your parents? Hey, you mentioned your mom worried about you know just the attention and all that. How are they handling all of this? Um, I would just – my parents are great, and they – I think they're fine. They're just worried about me. Um, putting myself, like I said, in a position for a lot of criticism. Um, but that's what I sign up for, um, especially being a place kicker. It's either love you or hate you. Um, there's going to be a lot of criticism, and there has been a lot of criticism um, up to this point. And I was talking to a couple people, and I was just like, you know, it's pretty unique that I'm in a position that that many people can be mad at me. I don't know if I'll ever be in this position again. Um, and that's the mindset I have to have. You know, if I start thinking negative, it's only going to go negative. Um, and so it's just, you know, I'm in a position where that many people can hate me if, you know, I miss everything. So that, that's kind of just my mindset. And they worry a lot about how I'm taking it. Um, and I just feel, feel pretty comfortable. And I know the people that matter have my back no matter what. Um, the people that know me, you know, they're going to still love me no matter what happens. So I'm not too worried about it. I imagine their falls have been consumed for a really long time now. They thought they were free. Yes. I know my parents would have been on vacation. My mom was after the banquet last year, and she's like, I'm so excited. I love Clemson football, but I'm so excited not to go to a game this year. Um, and when I got the call, she was like, I've never been more excited to go to football games. Um, but, yeah, actually, I was supposed to go on. I was supposed to go to work and then do, like, a little Christmas graduation trip with them, and that's going to be canceled. We'll be in bowl season. So um, they're happy to be coming to watch me play. And actually, my sister's down in Fort Lauderdale. 
she's going to be able to come see me this week, so I'm excited to see them, and I know they're excited to see me. So how does that conversation with your, your boss go? You don't text him, probably. You probably <coughs> have a call. What kind of work were you doing, and how does that conversation go? He's awesome. Um, I think they said his name on the uh, TV that one day, on, during the FSU game, Matt. <laughs> He, so I sent him an email Monday morning. I was up talking with Sweeney, um, and I had to shoot him an email because I had a contract with Ally saying, you know, I have to go start work in the next two weeks. Um, and so I sent him an email, and I said, there's been something that came up. I'd love to chat with you on the phone pretty much. I broke it all down for him, how, what was happening. He actually went to Clemson. He's still um, involved a lot with Clemson, and he was like, Man, you gotta go do it. I won't stop. Like this is an opportunity of a lifetime. You go, you go do that. We're not worried about it. He was awesome, um, and even everyone in who I was working with this summer, um, they've reached out and they've all been super, super nice and supportive about it. Um, honestly, it's like everything is working out just perfectly. Where like they're all excited for me and they support me. My parents support me. Friends, everything is just like it all worked out too well. Um, and that's why I think it's going to be like a special end to the season. It's like everything's building. Everything's so perfect. Some, some good's going to pop, I know. That's an ally banking. Sorry? Ally banking? Ally financial, yes. Okay, yeah, like A-L-L-Y. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to talk to Sweeney, uh, Clay Sweeney, uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, just from a kicker's perspective, what makes a good holder? Um... Clay makes a good holder. Also, Drew and Will. Um, I would just say trust. Um, I haven't ran out there once this year worrying about Holden Casperson or Clay Sweeney or the people that are blocking. For, I'm just worrying about myself. Um, and I'd say sometimes, you know, if you have a holder that doesn't know what they're doing and you're like, are they going to the, get their job done? A kicker doesn't want that on their mind while they're back there thinking about, is there any wind up there? Keep my chest up, swing through, keep my hip. You know, there's so many things you can think about. Um, so having a good holder is all based on trust and just, I'd say, Clay Sweeney, Drew, Will, all the guys that I've had hold for me, um, they've been the epitome of that. And I think me, Clay, and Holden have a really, like, good chemistry to us. Um, there's, like, no reason, like, we can't talk. If something does go awry, we just bring it up, we talk about it, and then we fix it. Um, and usually that's in like pregame warm up or in practice and stuff. Um, so yeah, I would just say trust, and we have a lot of trust, or I have a lot of trust in them. Hopefully they have a lot of trust in me, and if not, I'll make sure they do after the next couple of weeks. It's kind of interesting that they're all the same. They're all brothers. I mean, are they similar people? Different? Like how would you describe them? Um, I would say like me and my sister, we're very different people. They're all different in their own way, but. I mean, they're all really, really good guys. Um, I have people outside of the program that often ask me, like, how are they as people? And it's like, they're so down to earth, salt of the earth people. Um, you, can, you can ask for like a better holder, someone who, my job's on the line, Clay, I couldn't have asked for a better guy. Um, they're, they're really good people, and so yeah. You already had a relationship with Robert on the last season. Um, how, how much did that help in kind of you know, smoothing things out the, with the transition, that process, and how much um, has he leaned on you for your, your maturity, your uh, experience and expertise? Um, yeah, so last year Robert came in, and uh, it was really competitive. So we're – the whole specialist room – you got to be competitive when you're at a place like Clemson. That's why you come here is to compete. Um, and so this year, last year, like, I'm just asking, like, I know I'm asking for competition from him. He's asking the same for me. Um, but, like, as a person, we get along really well. And um, we had a good conversation when I first got here. Um, it, it is an awkward situation coming in. There's a lot of like noise around it. Um, and so it was good to just sit down and talk with him. Um, I was probably more nervous for that conversation than I was for you know some of the kicks I had. But after that, it's like back to normal. We're good friends. We play ping pong like every other day in the facility. We talk about kicking. Um, if, I don't know, in practice, he misses one, I miss one. We'll talk about it. Um, 
what do you think happened? And so it's good to have that backboard, but to like backboard ideas off of, but at the same time, it's competition. It's like, you know, he's going to make me better and hopefully I can make him better. He has all the talent in the world. And I think everyone in this room knows this. Um, he's got a great leg on him and he's going to have a really bright future with Clemson. Um, and so I just hope, you know, maybe part of the reason I came back is because he's going to go on to be one of the best kickers that Clemson's ever seen. Um, and I could help him with that. I don't know what the story is, but um, any way I can help him, I, I hope I can. And he's he's taken it really well. And ho I think he's really mature about how he handled the whole situation because it is, it's a tough position to be in. John, we got a chance to talk to you after the Florida State game. And the way everything led up to that game the week of, it, it seemed like you really took that loss quite hard. I, I imagine the aftermath. Your teammates, they picked you up, they lifted you up. I was just curious what that meant to you. It meant a lot. Actually, when I was talking to y'all right after the game, I don't know if y'all noticed, there was two of my teammates, Aiden and Florenzo, Phil Florenzo, standing right behind y'all, making sure, like, that just shows you how much they had my back and were there for me. Um, everyone reaching out and just, you know, it was a tough position to be in, obviously. I'm in that position for a reason. I need to get the job done. Um, but the support that the team had, the way people are coming up to me and saying, we still believe in you, like, this isn't the end of your story, that means a ton. And probably why I still feel so comfortable being here kicking, you know? If they didn't want me here and I was just felt like, I, you know, I'm in the wrong position, maybe they don't have their trust in me, um, it would be a lot more uncomfortable for me. But I feel very comfortable because I know they have my back, and I'll have their back no matter what. Any questions for Jonathan from Zoom? Anybody else in the room? All right, appreciate it, Jonathan. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you, man. Thank you all. Sheldon Lewis should be up here.